Sometimes when recording vocals, you hear the letter P sound in a much more aggressive manner than you would like. It actually has a popping sound. And the reason why is because the letter P forces a lot of air from your mouth, and if it goes into the microphone, it creates a pop, and that's known as a plosive. Well, the best thing to do is to have devices to stop that from happening. For example, there are pop filters, and I'm actually using one here. But suppose you already have the vocal made, and it already has those plosives, and you want to minimize it. Well, there are tricks to handle that. Let me show you how. First here, I'll create an audio track. I'll call it the P vocal. There we go. And now I'm going to remove the pop filter from my microphone and say a sentence as I record. Perry played with pills. Okay. Pop filter back on. Let's keep that uh, minimized a little bit here. And let's hear this again. What will we have? Perry played with pills. Very good. Okay, now, if you look at the audio file, you'll see somewhat of a pattern that's occurring. It's called an S pattern. It's a very sharp going up and down again. You see it here not as sharply, and for the third time, you'll see it again. Well, that's what we want to minimize. Now, to do that, what I will do is I'm going to break these up into separate events, and then we're going to use the fade in feature. So I will right click, choose the scissors. Ah, but first, before I do that, let's make a copy of this so we can compare it to the original. Go over here, we'll duplicate the track and I'll mute the original one and I will play with this one. Okay, back to where I was, choose the scissors, make sure you're set for snap being off and I'll go right before the, where the plosive starts. Click that, do it again and do it the third time. There we go. Now that we have that done, I can choose the particular event. And at the upper left hand corner, it has the fade in feature. When I see the double arrow, I click down on it and drag to the right. And you see how it's getting smaller? And I want to go far enough to the right that it really doesn't interfere with the waveform to the right. Uh, there is starting to there. We'll stop right there. And I'll do the same thing on the next one. About here. Right there. Okay. And uh, final time. There we go. Let's hear or see if that's any improvement. Perry played with pills. Ah, much better. To remind you, here's what it sounded like originally. Perry played with pills. Okay. Now, if that's not sufficient, you could also take an additional measure. And that's the idea of basically removing some of that. What I would do is I would click on this event, go to the bottom left, and I see that double arrow, and I'm going to move it to the right, enough that a lot of it's gone, and I may have to adjust, in fact, I'll definitely have to adjust the fade-in feature. There we go, so it's like that, so it's much more minimized. Same thing again, do it again, we'll go back a step here, and the third time, there, and back off a little bit. All right, listen to that. Oops, solo the correct one. Okay, here we go. Harry played with pills. Much, much better. Finally, what we've done now is create a gap. And sometimes that could have an effect with the background hum, noise, or whatever that you had being missing. It may sound a little off. Well, what you could do in certain situations is you could copy just a little of the blank part beforehand. Like, say, this. There, I'll Clip that short, hold down the Alt key to take a copy, and cover up the blank area, and I'll do it again. I'll move over to here, and hold down the Alt key, and do it a third time. Okay, now let's listen, first of all, to the original product, which was Perry played with pills, and the fix-up. Perry played with pills. Hills. And that's it. Check out my new course. It's called Cubase Overview. What it is, what it does, and what version to use.